Hi, just to caution up top, the book that we're talking about today and some of the excerpts we read from it cover some kind of harrowing topics and have some disturbing imagery related to uh, broken limbs and things like that. So if that's something you don't want to hear, then take that under advisement. On to the show. Hello, I'm Jake. Hi, I'm Carrie. And this is Love You Like Crazy, the podcast where we talk and rant about young adult books. So, uh, we, uh, <laughs> so Carrie. Okay, so I think you're tired, but beyond that, we're about to talk about a book. Would you like to introduce said book? Oh man, would I ever. So, um, this is a book that just came out this very day on August 31st, 2021. So, I'm going to try to get this edited and out as soon as possible, but it'll probably be a day or two from now, actually. That was very confusing. Um, but anyway, it's The the Woods Are Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins. And we, we, re- we both read it like hotcakes. That's not a phrase. No, it is not. <laughs> we did read like hotcakes. <laughs> and uh, we're going to give our hot take on this book um, by... An author that both of us are quite fond of. Yeah, I'm just super head over heels, you know, in, in love with, with Stephanie Perkins' books. Um, so I'm excited to talk about this book. Let's get to it. I suppose so. So what book are we talking about? We're talking about uh, The Woods Are Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins. Published August 31, 2021, which is today. We read the the whole book today. It's not a long book. It's only what 270 pages or something, 240 pages. But a lot of stuff happens. So let's see. Where do you want to start with this? Stephanie Perkins is a YA writer. She writes lovely, sweet books like Anna and the French Kiss and Lola and the Boy Next Door. She wrote Isla and the Happily Ever After. And then she writes Body Horror. Holy shit. <laughs> people are being eviscerated. The novel. Yes, people are being eviscerated. That could be the name of her next book. Ah, uh, yeah, there's someone inside your house, the woods are always watching. People are being eviscerated. So, let's see. I mean, this book has uh in contrast to the next book we're going to talk about, um Roughly four characters. Yeah. I mean, there are others that are mentioned, but none of them, I don't, oh, I guess, I guess Nina's parents. Yeah. Nina's parents have s- small speaking roles and the two hikers that they come across have very small speaking roles. But beyond that, there's really, it's really just four characters. Four characters and a bear. And a bear. So yeah, a couple of high school girls decide that they want to go camping and uh, hilarity ensues. <laughs> yeah, like I think for the first third of the book or maybe a little longer than that even, um, they are just out hiking and hating it um, to the extent that for a while there, it's like, is is this a horror story that the horror is just that these two people are going hiking and they've never done it before and they totally hate it because that is horrifying yeah i mean i was kind of into that as a concept i thought maybe one of them was going to snap mm. but i mean obviously then the woods wouldn't always uh, though i guess like the woods watching could be like the woods are watching them go slowly mad yes but no they have a watcher they each have a watcher they they each get their own they sure do Okay, so we've got Josie, Josie and Nina. Nina is going to move away to go to college. Yes, Nina's going to uh, USC, University of Southern California. And uh, Josie is staying in Asheville. So she's going to UNCA, living at home with her mom and the memories of her dead dad. Which neither she nor her mom are handling particularly well, it seems like. He died in a car accident? He did. He got smushed by a refrigerator, which uh, that sort of came out of nowhere. So um, thanks for that weird detail, Stephanie Perkins. I was not <laughs> expecting someone to get flattened by a refrigerator on the highway, but um, I guess neither did Josie's dad. <laughs> Fuck. I wondered if that guy was going to turn up at some point, the uh, 
the squisher, the person who did not tie down their refrigerator adequately. I mean, he could have. We don't know. It could have been could have been Willie for all we know. Uh, so what did you think about our protagonists? I mean, they were very typical teenage girls. I didn't find them like completely remarkable. And maybe that's what I liked about them. I found their relationship, their friendship to be very believable in that, you know, friendships end after high school and people go their separate ways. And so, you know, they worked together. They were best friends. They knew each other really well, but they sort of, I think both felt that their friendship had reached its peak and that this was going to be their their chance to, you know, sort of have one last thing together that they'll always remember. Um, of course, they did it all wrong because it was their first time camping. Yeah, but even that was, like, believable to me. It was totally believable. Like, you know, the, the fact that Josie's wearing the wrong shoes and Nina's got the friggin' brand new shoes. And, and so, yeah, I found them believable. I found them relatable for that. You know, the fact that they're snapping at each other. You know, they start off okay and then... When they realize, like, oh, shit, we're out of water. We're going the wrong way. We don't know where we are. Our phones are dead. Like, I found it really believable that they start snapping at each other and they're not, like, you know, hunky-dory happy about it. They're just like, you know, you drag me down. No, you drag me down. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I I read a few reviews on Goodreads um, and some people found them annoying or whatever. But I, yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, the first part of the book where they're just like wandering through the forest, being cranky with each other was like a part of the book that I thought was kind of relatable. And also was, I felt like was kind of legitimately a horror story by itself. And I liked it. Yeah, I mean, it really is. I don't think you're wrong there. I mean, I am a very decidedly indoor cat. And so the idea of me just going to the friggin' mountains in East Jesus, nowhere in North Carolina to, you know, hike for a couple of days when I am not by any shape of the imagination, like a wayfinder or <laughs> anyone who wants to carry a backpack on their back more than, you know, two novels worth of heaviness. Yeah. 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 And, um, and like, you know, my stepsister walked across the country and I talked to her every week and kind of my impression of it was like the first week or so was like pretty rough. Yeah, because I think it's got to be learning what you've done wrong and trying to correct it on the on the spot. And one thing in the in the book that matched what Lizzie said is like backpacks are the worst. They just will kill you, <laughs> kill your back. Yeah, the, the fact that she had like bruises all over her body just from the backpack alone. I was like, yep. yep. Not, not awesome. You're, you're, you're turning me off of, of ever hiking Stephanie Perkins. So good on you. Uh, I mean, I should say, I should say, um, you know, I have gone camping and enjoyed it and stuff. Yeah. I've gone camping too, but it's always like the drive up to the camp spot type of camping. Yeah. I think going from zero to Appalachian, essentially Appalachian trail is, is a rough one. So then things start to happen. Mm -hmm. That are especially bad. Yeah. They make it to their destination in a day and a half, and then they're returning to their car, which will take another day and a half, obviously. And they decide to go on a like slightly back trail. And then at the end of a chapter, right, they get to a point where they can't find the, um, the trail, uh, which is being marked by bottle caps nailed into the into trees oh i i didn't notice this before i guess i'm just reading on uh, in chapter eight nina says nature always exacts its revenge Hmm. and you know what nature totally does anyway oh yeah that's a good point well she also says if entitled white men don't kill us first climate change will ha <laughs> ha so i guess you're getting climate change well that's yeah that's the sequel <laughs> well, I don't want... we're just writing all kinds of sequels yeah, like um, the woods are on fire anyway yeah get get to your point so i won't interrupt you bottle caps right so they can't find it and then um they're arguing fine josie said though her voice was tight with resistance obeying the missing instructions she veered course 
to the left, but we're still going home. If you think I'm spending one more night with you out here. Or, Nina peered closer at the holes. It almost looks like they were pride. A crash of sticks and branches and debris exploded through the woods. Josie screamed as she fell into the earth. So that's like a big surprise out of nowhere. See, I don't know if that was a surprise. I was expecting something like this. Did you expect the beginning of the next chapter? Well, no, I did not. Do you want to read that passage? I sure will. Crack. Josie's left fibula snapped as her left tibia punctured through skin. The fracture was heard before it was felt. Josie's vision blurred as she thunked to a splashy halt. Her heartbeat flailed erratically and her face flushed blazing hot. Yeah. A thick hunk of bone was bulging out from within. Her shoed foot hung limply from her ankle, held on by torn muscle and bloody flesh. So, you know, cozy. If we still had the video on, you would see me squirming. <laughs> e, yeah, that's ooh, ah. Yeah. Thank God they don't have a stick shift in their car. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, let's talk about, so, I mean, we're kind of going through the book, but I do I do want to ask you about that. So, at the end of the book, uh, they drive off. Uh, Josie, at this point, is also minus a, a hand. Yeah. Um, that gets shot off at one point. Oh, it does. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's, uh, well, you heard uh, how Stephanie Perkins describes the, the leg, and the, the hand description is similarly graphic yep it's an explosion of flesh and sinew and Ugh. it's all of those things it's all of those things so then she drives at the end they leave and, she, and josie drives yeah and nina is the passenger so and we're like why the fuck is she not driving wait does there's something about driving i just remember this like one of them doesn't oh it's it's character development right like josie josie doesn't drive because her because her dad got smushed by a, a by a, a refrigerator in a car so she didn't drive that's right and then i i don't remember if it's particularly explained but i get you know nina is asthmatic and maybe she yeah um so i found the passage uh, it says, Nina dug out her keys and swayed, taking Josie with her in a hard lean against the door. She was close to passing out. Every ounce of her remaining fortitude had gone into helping Josie reach this point. A life-threatening asthma attack was well underway. So that's that's the explanation. But okay, fair enough. I'll, t I'll I guess I'll take it. It's not you know, it's not having your hand explode. It's not having your foot you know dangling behind you, but. It's still, it is life-threatening. She still has most of her blood, though. Uh, yeah, it does. It's It still is questionable to me, but uh, but there is an explanation there, I guess. Yeah, so our, our antagonists. So there's, uh, there's two dudes. We think it's just one, but then it's two. It's Willie and uh, Lyman. Udi's previous owner. What? Uh from Garfield. Oh. There was originally another human character named Lyman whose dog Udi was. And then at some point, um, Jim Davis decided that I didn't really need an extra character. So Lyman just disappeared and went off to the woods. Lyman! John! Great hey. to see you. You haven't changed a bit, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> John, I need a place to stay. I'm cold, I'm hungry, I'm weak. Take me in. Sure, Lyman. You know my home is your home. And became a mass murderer. Serial killer. Yeah, so they, uh, one thing that was like super fucking gross and, and, and also a really nice touch is when they got to their first night of, of camping, there was another uh, tent already set up and um, nobody was there, but they didn't go investigate because they didn't want to be creepers who were going to go check out somebody else's tent. But if they had, they would have saved themselves a shit ton of pain. 
<laughs> because there was a dead body in there. A guy like roughly the age of Josie's older brother, I think they said. Mm -hmm. Um, but not not her older brother, to be clear. Just he reminded her of him. Yeah, because the the girl also reminded her of the, the girlfriend, you know, the first time, you know, just just going out camping new and excited and then, you know, well now dead. Very, very dead. So Willie and Lyman had murdered him and taken her off to their lean to in the woods. Um, or one of them likes them alive and the other one prefers them dead. Yes. Which is a detail I did not want to think about. No. But thanks for that, Steph. So um, after after Josie falls into the sinkhole, uh, which we later find out was set up as a trap, Willie finds her. And while meanwhile, Lyman is tracking down Nina, who's gone back to get help. Um, and, uh, I don't know, like, what do you even say? So, like, um, Willie masturbates on the edge of the pit. Uh, mm -hmm. how do we, <laughs> uh, Josie throws a bottle of, 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 of pee at him and hits him right in the face, which is, you know, pretty great. I mean, for someone who is in rough shape she has good aim yes unfortunately so does he yeah. that's when he shoots her hand off he really does doesn't he yeah all the way off she has no right hand but hey i got to make a great a great joke about that so you know <laughs> sorry hand it's not worth repeating but i'm gonna think about it and giggle <laughs> <laughs> well i don't know carrie i mean i gotta hand it to you um <laughs> Yeah, so Josie manages to get out, shoots Willie, uh, and leaves him unconscious in the in the sinkhole. But turns out he's not actually dead. Meanwhile, Lyman tracks down Nina, and after she figures out what he's up to, I mean, not the full extent of it, but that he's up to no good, he kidnaps her at gunpoint, takes her back to the lean to. Uh. Oh, we skipped the part where Lyman or um, where Nina and Josie meet up again. Uh, but whatever they they're both going to the same place and they run into each other. But then Lyman finds them and and then that's when Josie realizes that's not the same guy. And oh shit, there's two of them. There's two of them. But she still thinks one of them is dead. So she's like, "Well, your buddy's dead. So who gives a fuck? Like, what are you gonna do? Your buddy's dead." But. Buddy isn't dead, and Buddy has a, a bullet in his chest, but not in the right place. So then uh, Josie is, Josie, like, has the mangled remains of the friendship ring that she and Nina have both got. Like, for fuck's sake, I was not expecting that fucking ring that they talk about. I mean, of course, like, the ring's going to show up again, but, like, also, the fact that the ring cuts through the fucking ropes like fucking hell come on that is one strong ass ring when when one of them shatters because uh because she smashed it against something accidentally but yet now it can cut through a rope yeah no nylon rope is probably stronger than that but i but i'm you know whatever <laughs> it's fine it'll all be fine everything is fine yeah um <laughs> so basically nina distracts them and tries to uh Insight dissension between Lyman and Willie while Josie is sawing through the rope. And I mean, it, well, well, she's not she's not failing at that. She is getting them to, to you know, there's some infighting there. You know, there's there's definitely some some, you know, some fighting happening, some some really, you know, they're, they're questioning each other's motives. Are they going to turn is this one going to turn the other one in? Are they going to kill each other? And then. Who comes bumbling through the woods? Bear. A fucking bear. Now, since the beginning of the book, they'd been talking about bears. And, you know, when they get to the trailhead, there's a big, there's a handwritten sign about all the different bear sightings. And, and of course, now they're, you know, thinking, I wonder if they wrote those to you know, sort of guide people into the, 
into the direction that they needed them to go for, you know, people hunting purposes. And also like one of the distinctions that's made between Josie and Nina is that Nina is afraid of people and Josie is afraid of bears. I think they're both afraid of people and bears now. Yes. That's my guess. I just hope they get a lot of therapy. <laughs> a lot of therapy. Um, I love, it's like, so this takes place in Western North Carolina, and I used to live in North Carolina. And I loved that one of the things that they did was try to convince the the murderers that the the guy in in the tent that they'd killed, or that one of them killed, the guy was the governor's son. Mm. And Governor Roy Cooper really is the governor of North Carolina right now, but I don't think he has a son. And I, if he does, I don't think that's his son's name, but I was like, wow. So sort of by a roundabout way, Governor Roy Cooper saved these girls' lives. <laughs> it's true. And also it kind of felt like a Silence of the Lambs thing, right? Where um, in Silence of the Lambs, uh, the last woman who's kidnapped is the daughter of a senator, I think. I believe so, yeah. And so there's a lot more clout to get her back. Right. So the, I've, yeah, I don't know if that's like an intentional reference. I think pr probably it is, but it doesn't matter one way or another. But anyway, yeah, it's a, it's a nice, it's a nice lie and it works. Yeah. And for me, for, for the, the, the whole two serial killers thing, I kept coming back to Henry portrait of a serial killer. So Henry and, and Otis tool mm -hmm. and, and Henry Lee Lucas, I just kept, kept thinking about them like, Oh, two creepy fucking dudes who just like kidnap people and kill them like that's the only pair that i could think of and i just kept you know imagining them which i'm assuming is probably intentional one thing that i thought was weird was there are like two situations where nina kind of comes into close physical proximity to each of the the murderers and then there's sort of a little flash, little like capsule biography of the person. Like she can sense the, you know, oh, single mother, whatever. And I thought that was kind of weird and I didn't really think I needed it. Yeah, I didn't want to, I didn't want to think about them as people really. Yeah. But also, you know, maybe it, maybe it was necessary to, you know, to sort of take us to, not the why they're doing what they're doing, but the, you know, also why they're doing what they're doing. Like, people don't just murder for no reason. So, like, what brought them to this place in their life where this is, you know, how they get their kids? I don't know if it's supposed to make me feel bad for them, because I certainly don't. But it's also, you know, maybe reminding us that, you know, things have to happen in order for people to be able to do terrible things like they don't just do them for funsies i don't know i mean i don't do it do i want do i really want to think about their fucking daddy issues and their mommy issues not really but and i i certainly don't want nina to be thinking about that either i don't want her to ever have to think about you know them being human because to her they're not they're not human they're 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 awful people who, you know, tried to rape and kill her. But also it's fiction, Carrie, so stop. Well, I mean, you know, fiction, fiction has to work for you, you know? Yeah, I think a lot of this book worked. And, you know, I, you know how I feel about Stephanie Perkins. I love Stephanie Perkins, but I don't think this book worked for me in a, I, you, you know, what you'd said was it was harrowing. Yeah. And yes, it is a harrowing book, but I was not scared. Okay. I didn't ever feel myself in any sort of like, you know how sometimes when you're reading horror, you're like, ooh, something's going to jump out and get me. Like, I never felt like that. I'm like, eh, I'm in my apartment. No one's going to get me. No one wants to get me. I'm gross. <laughs> uh, uh, that seems apt to me. It seems like one of the things that Stephanie Perkins is doing in these horror oriented novels is um, kind of graphic descriptions of violence, which, you know, it's like um, is quite a contrast to the 
the romance oriented books. Yeah. And, and I'm just like, am I, am I putting her in that box because of those are the books I read first and I like a lot more? Or does she just, is she just not necessarily as good at, at these books? And I think horror is a passion of hers. I think she loves horror movies. I think she loves reading horror books. I think that's sort of like a thing that she enjoys. Like, I was reading the afterward and how like, you know, when she went camping with her husband, she was telling him all these horrible stories about serial killers and bears. And so I'm like, okay, so this is just sort of like who she is, but also like, I don't think she's as good at writing horror. I don't think that these are, um, like this book was pretty straightforward and there were certainly some things that were kind of, um, that I wasn't necessarily expecting, um, e.g. people's hands getting shot off suddenly. Yeah, that I wasn't expecting either. I mean, I was sort of just expecting, like, he was going to be like, again, just, you know, you're you're more hassle than you're worth. Blow the, the head off and be done with it. But no, that didn't happen. Instead, it was the hand. Yeah, these, these books seem a little more, um, I don't know, this feels a little more negative than I want to be, but, like, by the numbers... Than the the romance books where I feel like she's she tried to do different things. But did she? I mean, it's still boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl. Yeah, but within that those bounds. I mean, yes, boy boy loses girl because girl is in a relationship with a heavily tattooed man who she goes and has sex with in the back of a van and then feels guilty about. Or you know, boy meets girl and then they break up and then some years later you know <laughs> they get back i don't know I, I feel like those books were kind of trying to do you know within the bounds of basically light romance uh ya romance we're trying to do things within those bounds that were kind of distinct from each other which admittedly like it's it's not like this book is super similar to the other horror books that she wrote but i, I they just felt you know what though they they are similar in a, in a in a sort of way i mean it's still boy stalking people and doing horrible things to them and um th i mean they're very different and, and they're very different but like i feel like the last book is kind of like you read that book and you think like oh this is kind of like scream and then you read this book and you're like, well, this is kind of like, what's that movie? I don't know. You know, I don't watch horror movies. So, and that's, that's the thing. I'm wondering because, because, um, deliverance. Yeah. Deliverance. So I was thinking like the cabin in the woods or, you know, the hills have eyes. I don't know. I don't know. Um, anyway, I think of, of her horror books very much our movies she's writing a screenplay she watches a lot of horror movies these are absolutely screenplays to movies and one her first book is now going to be a movie on netflix and i can see this book being a very very successful very scary movie mm. if it's shot just right i mean you were in the fucking woods of north carolina in the mountains it's fucking scary there's no one around you wake up and your fucking phone is dead you and your best friend have all these fraught emotions just for you know the end of summer moving off to college and like you're trying to make everything just so and then oh shit there's someone stalking you yeah and you don't know it. And everything is telling you to turn around, but you are stubborn and you want to make this super fun. And you keep going forward and you regret everything. And I wonder if they ever actually stay friends after this. Like, can you stay friends with someone after something like this? Well, I feel like... um I think that something that that happens in this book is like the first part of the book is sort of emphasizing the ways that they are different from each other to the extent that a lot of reviewers were like, why are these people friends? Um, but then as once they're separated, uh, it starts to kind of emphasize how they're similar. 
um, we see them having similar thoughts, even though they're nowhere near each other. Um, it turns out that both of them had lost their friendship ring and bought a replacement on the sly. So the other one wouldn't know that they lost it, uh, <laughs> which is like a little dorky, but I enjoyed that. I, I thought that was a nice detail. Um, and then at the end, they're like working together to get away from the murderers. One thing I really liked about that is that, you know, earlier um, in the book, they they were really getting on each other's nerves. And then at the end of the book, like they just they were able to pick up each other's train of thought perfectly to just like be able to fuck with those guys. Yeah. Like she immediately picked up what what the other one was. I was like, I think it was Nina was talking and then Josie was just like, yep. Oh, you're fucked because that's that's the governor's kid. And and they they there was not even a moment hesitation. And I think I think you're right. That's you know, that shows their true bond of friendship like that they're able to just like trust the other one so much but at the same time are you really able to be friends with that person after this like what are you going to talk about hey remember that time we almost got killed yep that sucked so do you want to go get a drink yes i want to go get all the drinks i believe i'll get a one hand discount <laughs> i got my arm shot my my hand shot off by a mass murderer who wants to buy shots shot 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 no just one can we use a different word baby <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i mean like at the end you know you are kind of wondering what is next for them and i mean it's there's a question of whether Lyman and Willie are actually dead at the end. I hope so. And you know what? But I also hope not. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, what they were saying is, we're leaving a lot of DNA around. Yeah. Y you're fucked. We're leaving so much DNA around this place. And they're just like, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. No, 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 it's just my DNA. Mm -mm, no, it's not. It's my DNA, too. My arm's mostly gone. So I'm hoping... You know, at least one of them is still alive to get like completely because I want them to get like. I want other people to see it and know it and get their closure, too, because they, there are other dead bodies in the woods. Yeah. Like, do I want I want them to be found, of course, but I also want I want those two to like be known as the guys who did it. And yes, they know their names, Willie and Lyman, but like. Who's Willie? Who's Lyman? Where they live? Yeah, but yeah, I was like, is Nina still going to college? Like, what's? I would, I would imagine not. Could you? I mean, I'm sorry, but no, I would not let my kid go to college after that. If you've got one fucking, you know, you're, you 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 just got like almost murdered in in you. No, you've got to go to therapy, a goodly amount of therapy. You're going to community college at best, and I'm wrapping you up in a blanket for at least a year. Yeah, I think I agree with that. And her, and her parents are super overprotective so i mean they are allowing her to to study filmmaking as well as um economics i believe mm. or something like that but i'm like they are not gonna let her go to usc yet or they're gonna move there with her so in the at the end of the day like are you glad you read this or oh absolutely i'm glad i read it i mean as much as i'm disappointed in the book for not being a capital s stephanie perkins book it's still a very much stephanie perkins book i mean the girl can write in a way that makes you i mean i still felt my fucking leg oh boy twist off like, it is gross but she can she can do it is it her best book no i'd say it's probably your fifth best book that i've read mm. but i'm not mad at reading it and it was quick read too so that was helpful that we actually got to read a book in a day and talk about it in the same day yeah i mean this is uh not a kind of book that i typically read um but i don't i'm glad i read it it's nice to see what stephanie perkins is up to in these days we have made a death pact to watch the movie, I think. Yeah, we have. We've we've made a death pact and I might actually be dead in order to watch it because I am I am so scared of horror. 
Like I can't, I, you can do horror more than I can. I can't do any of it. Well, we'll see. At least I know, I know what happens, but I also, because I know what happens, I know how gory it is going to be. Like that's the difference in the two books. While this book has some gore in it, it's really two instances of gore and a couple of horrific events. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, there are some dead bodies and they are disgusting. There is a hand blown off and that is fucking nasty and the foot thing nasty, but it is not just like a constant barrage of gore. Like there's someone inside your house is. So someone inside your house has a bunch of uh, murders. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a, a, a mass murdering teenage killer going on a, a killing spree. And as I said before, hilarity ensues. Hmm. Um, I'm terrified. Even though I know what's going to happen, I'm like, there's going to be changes and there's going to be jump scares and it's going to be gross and I'm nervous. But yes, we have a death pack. We're going to watch. It. Okay. Any, I think, I don't think I have anything else to say necessarily. Do you have any final thoughts? I really hope Stephanie writes another romantical book after this. <laughs> I need the palate cleanser. I think she needs a palate cleanser. God damn, her last two books were just like rough on the brain. Like, give us some like some sweet fluff, will you, Steph? Sweet fluff is not, would be nice. Mm -hmm. hmm. That our next book that we're going to talk about will also take place in North Carolina. So we just can't get out of that fucking state now, can we? <laughs> we we can't. Um, like, oh, actually, I did have one other thing I wanted to say about this book. Yeah, please. Um, so I feel like, you know, we've got the two pro protagonists, but in the end, I kind of feel like it's Josie's story. Like she has um, the character development, you know, like she has a very explicit character arc, and I didn't really feel like Nina did. Uh, do you think that's accurate? Yeah, I hadn't really thought about it, but I mean, in retrospect, absolutely. It's it's Josie's story. Um, Nina. I think Nina's growth is maybe realizing that she does need other people mm. because, you know, part of her thing was, you know, she ditched her other friend um, and, and she let Josie think that she was the one who was ditched, but it was the other way around. And um, she wanted to do this trip with Josie because she felt bad for Josie I think not because she really wanted to do it with her but that she she just needed to like okay I'll give my friend a little boost of confidence and she'll be better and then I can go off and live my life but I think her character arc is more like maybe I need to trust others but just not men but bears you can trust bears you can always trust a bear <laughs> yeah that's that's the moral don't trust men trust yeah and the whole thing you know in the book is that they kept talking about oh the bears the bears the bears and so when the bear comes fucking bounding through the goddamn woods i both cheered and groaned yeah uh right i mean there are several times in the book where i thought the bear was like when she looks in the tent and there's something in there i'm like wait is it a bear i guess a bear wouldn't really fit in the tent probably but um a bear taking a nap in the tent yeah there were a couple of times where I was like, oh, wait, is this the bear? No. Um, so you, you called it a bear ex machina. Um, I believe I called it something like that or a de deus ex barina. <laughs> uh, very apt. And then I just said uh, exunt. This is what you could. This is what your life could be like if you were in a text chain with Carrie and me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we're, okay, I'm just going to fucking say it. I called it a hand burger. <laughs> <laughs> it was a former hand. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. If you were in a text chain with us, yeah, that's the sort of shit you get. And I'm, you know what? I'm not sorry. I'd say sorry, not sorry, but it's just a hundred percent not sorry. Uh, let's see. So I interrupted. I interrupted something we were talking about i guess it was the next book yeah so we're gonna read another book and we're totally gonna talk about it very soon tomorrow i've, I've taken notes and everything yes yeah me too i i might uh reread part of it oh yeah is there uh, 
the thing about that book is there's just so many characters and I keep forgetting like who's who and oh my god everyone's got a fucking squire and everyone is a squire if they're not a squire then they're a I was like, who the fuck are you? There's just so many people. There's many. So many people. Um, and that book is Legendborn. By Tracy Dion. Yes. And that came out last year. The sequel is supposed to come out next year. I feel like I want to read it. I totally want to read it. Like, I loved this book so much. And I'm really excited to talk about it. It just has 40,000 characters. And I, I know I won't do the book justice because I'm just going to talk about Carolina the whole time. Yeah. And I'm, and you need to have me not do that, but I'm totally going to do that because the book takes place in a, you know, in a college that I worked in for 13 years. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm really looking forward to that. So I got shit to say. I look forward to hearing the shit you have to say. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, uh, thanks for listening to this hot take special. <laughs> you did not just. I love that you did that. <laughs> About The Woods Are Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins. And we'll talk to you again soon. Talk to you again soon. We love you like crazy. Something like that. Josie has the upper hand. You may think you're being clever like a modern man, but Josie has the upper hand. Love Can I tell you what I'm imagining? <laughs> a pancake with glasses reading a book. <laughs>